Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to the Geek Group. In today's equipment autopsy, we have this little green widget, which is an Acroprint model ESP-180, made in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it appears to be a time card printer. I'm pretty sure of that. I think this came in viewer mail a while back, and I haven't gotten to play with it, but it's cool. So we got some paper, some rugged cardstock paper, and I'm gonna stick it in here all the way to the back, and there's really only one button, and it prints. What's it print? It says, May 12, 15, 0, 0, 0, 0, 31. So I gotta think that's month, day, year, hours, minutes, seconds. Let's try it again. No, it still says 0, 0, 0, 31. So either the clock's pooched or those aren't seconds. I don't know, but it's a time card printer and it has a very distinctive sound to it. And from that, we can tell that it is a dot matrix printer, which is just awesome because I don't get to play with those anymore. Almost the whole world is either laser jet or bubble jet. Nobody really does dot matrix. The only people that do dot matrix stuff at all anymore are people that use uh, the, the carbon copy paper where you still see that, sometimes even daisy wheel, but that's, that's really obscure. And I wanna take a daisy wheel printer apart. That would be really fun. I think we have one in the pile. I'll have to find out. Maybe in the next autopsy, you'll be an old printer of some sort. Daisy wheel or the, the, wall, the ball one, the those are cool. I've never gotten to take one of those apart, even like when they were popular. This needs, I don't know, we got lurfs. I might have to pop off lurfs to get in there. I don't think so, I think. I see four screws, so we might be all right. Let's see if we can get into it. That'll do. That's totally the right screwdriver. This says on the bottom, patent pending, and it looks to be, you know, old. I wonder if they finally got their patent. I went to an event a few years ago, and it was a, an inventors meeting thing. Like it was all people who were, who were wannabe inventors. And I actually had a woman tell me with a straight face you don't need to bother patenting anything. You just put patent pending on the bottom, and if you get caught, it's only like a $500 fine, which is way cheaper than actually trying to patent it. These people exist, and they're out there in the world. And that scares the hell out of me. So, ah, I'm the smart guy. I just got this, and I'm very happy with it. This is the best little utility knife I've ever had. It's a DeWalt. I got it at Home Depot and it's made of awesome. Batman showed up wearing one and I instantly fell deeply in love with it and had to get one. Oh, oh. Let's just try a little here. I'm trying not to damage anything. Oh, there's gears and stuff. Oh man, this is cool. This is so cool. All right, what do we got? We got a little board. We got three different things happening here. Ah, oh, can I get it? I wanna get it open enough that all the housing is out of the way, but not so open that I break something. Like I want it to, I want it to be as naked as I can get it and have it still work. So we're gonna cut this little zip tie right here. That'll let me stretch that way out. Now I can open it right up. Okay, so we've got the bottom. The bottom is just a couple motor controllers, a power supply, a little bit of logic, nothing major. But I gotta get, okay, the next level is these two here. That's a long screw, but I got it. Oh, that one's, 
That's in there. Okay, come on. So on the back, I can immediately see a really long gear drive and an indicator, which I will show to you in a moment here. Can I get this out? Will you come out? Please come out. I want to share your sweet goodness with the rest of the world. I want to make you famous. There's only those two screws. Oh, I hope this doesn't like clip together in ways that I'll never be able to get apart. All right, I'm taking a chance and hoping there's something behind the button thing here. Really no easy way to widge that out. Oh, oh, that does it. Yep, it does snap together. Okay. Come on out. And here, maybe? Yep. Okay. No, there's parts falling out. I want that whole thing intact. There is no way to have that intact. Well, we're just going to have to do the best we can because those are abs. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Hang on. We can pull that right out of there because that that's a totally separate deal. That's our trigger wires. Okay, so that's cycle start there. So now we're learning where things go. This goes to cycle start. This wire here goes up to move, up to sense that. That's our trolley. And our trolley wants to be in here. And you only work if you're held in place. Okay, so you need to be there. There's a lot of things happening all at once. That sits tucked in there. All right. It's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. Okay. So we don't need that. We only kind of need that. We don't need that. We probably need those again. All right, so I have the print head, which moves back and forth on this big cam here. There's a big worm drive. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to make that work really. So I'm gonna take this out. We don't need the pin. And I'm gonna pop out this little tab, there's a little tiny finger tab. Because if I pop that out, I can free that wire. And if I can free that cable, I can get the print head out. Well, that's got to unplug, okay. Blue stripe away from me, remember that, okay? That's really important. Blue stripe away from me. I can just feed this back through there like that. Take all that out. Okay. And then this goes through here. There's a the, the guys in rally have some serious game to be able to get all that together like that. That's not easy. Okay, so remember the blue stripe goes away from me. We'll plug that in down in there. We'll sock it. So that's happy. Now this part, I don't know. Ooh, it's an eccentric cam too. Well, if they got it in there, I can get it out. At 
least I should be able to. I'll take the springs off because those are nice springs. E clip. Hmm. All right, let's power it up and see what happens. Where's my plug? There's my plug down there. Okay, we're plugged in. Got our power from the wall. Now when I press this, this should do stuff and this should make a sound. Why aren't we printing? There's no printing noises. Am I not plugged in enough? Fix the ribbon, which was verschnicked. Why doesn't this make any sense? What am I doing wrong? I didn't break any of the wires. That is firmly seated. It doesn't print. You're breaking my heart. It worked. It worked fine until I messed with it. What am I missing? There's no contact sensor on this at all. This is just a dumb head. It just, it just moves. And the things aren't firing. What am I missing? Oh. I wonder. There's a couple little buttons. I can't see the display. Okay, that's just reset. Error one. Okay. Well, there's only two buttons, so there isn't a whole lot you can do. I might just take the whole board out. Let's take the board right out, because it just snaps in there. I want to make this little thing print because it's cool. There. I need a piece of paper to set this down on because our bench is metal and that'll suck. Because there's capacitors and such on this. They do fun things. Now it's only, it's only a 16 volt capacitor, but still it's, it's the thought that counts. All right, so I have switch one and switch two. I can make this work. 
and this is, there's two wires to the motor and then there's a couple wires up to the top here to the sensor. And the sensor is looking, there's a sensor right here. And it's looking, it's shaped, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. As down here, you can see this sensor. And this will have a light source on one side and a little sensor on the other side. When something goes in between it, it knows. It says, oh, I'm being blocked. And this has that, and on the back of this gear, there's a little fin, and it's looking for that to come around. Like, if, if we look, you can see the little window come by. I'll show you here. Maybe you can get a really good close-up of that. Look, look right in here, and you'll see the little window come by, and that's what tells it when to stop. See the little window? You can see when it comes by. And that's just a little light and a sensor, like a little LED and a, a sensor. So that's not getting us what we want. So I'm just going to unplug that, which they make difficult. Okay, so we've got that out of the equation. We've got our button, and now they're not seeing a load, and something might get angry because there's no load. Let's, yeah, okay. So we gotta figure out how to make this work, because if I can make this work, it'll do really cool things because it's a dot matrix print head, and I'd really like to show you how those work, because there's all kinds of cool stuff with little electromagnets, and very, very precise timing of firing of things. Yeah, you're making me crazy. Why doesn't it work? Hmm. I wonder, well, I don't get to show you it working because apparently we screwed something up. I think we screwed up something with its programming because I keep getting error on the screen. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you what it does deep inside here by actually taking it apart. So let's open up a dot matrix print head, which I have never done before. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about this too. I know how they work. I've never actually taken one apart. So this is going to be some pretty tiny stuff. Okay, so there's our ribbon cable that gives us no end of pain and strife. We don't need that. This is the actual print head. Now the way the print head works is you have the print head and you have the ink cartridge. Now, this is from the olden days, like the 90s. And the ink in here, there's a ribbon, a cloth ribbon, that rolls around in here from a spool here to a spool here. And you can see if I turn this wheel, the ribbon moves by. Okay, kind of like a, a cassette tape. And it recycles the ribbon. It just, it's a continuous loop. So this ribbon passes in front of this head. This, this head holds the ribbon like that. And everything's held in alignment and held tight by guides and stuff, but I'm just gonna hold it here to show you how it would work. So the ribbon passes in front of the head and the ribbon is saturated with ink. Inside the head, this is crazy tiny. So you gotta look really, really close. This is crazy tiny stuff, but Right here, there's a little line of pins. You'll see a shiny line down the middle of that. And that isn't a piece of metal, that's a whole bunch of pieces of metal, probably eight of them or so, maybe 12, I don't know, we'll know when we get in there. But there's a bunch of little needles that all end right here. And there's a bunch of electromagnets down in here. And by putting wire, like you can see the this looks like a motor from the side, but it's not. It's a whole bunch of little electromagnets, and each magnet fires a wire. It shoves the wire forward, and the wire bends around a little bit and comes out straight here, and they're, all, they're, they're in a circle back here, but they're all in a line here, and there's like eight or 12 of them. 
and each one of these is a pixel. So when this moves by, it fires like if it's, if it's doing a B, it goes and they all fire. Like so that's your line of your B. And then they break down. So if you took a letter and sliced it, that's how it makes it. It goes and they, they print out the shapes as it goes. And it makes a very distinctive sound. If you ever hear a printer, it goes that's a dot matrix printer. They're loud. So we're gonna open this up. I wanna see how deep we can dig into this. There's a little Torx screw on the end. With a little bit of red Loctite. I might get crazy lucky and take out one screw and this whole thing just opens right up for me, which would be great. Oh, wow. Okay, look. So now we can see they're set up like relay toggles, okay? See the, the little, these are armatures. So I'm gonna take this out. So there's, these are the parts that are actually moved by the electromagnet. They're a bunch of little, well, it's, it's similar in shape to a relay armature if you break them down individually. Altogether, this reminds me very much of the valve used in a pulse jet, the reed valves. And you can see there's little, see the little thick round parts? These are what actually get attracted to the magnet. So this is a lever, the fulcrum's at the outer ring, that, that outer blue ring is the fulcrum and that's just made of spring steel. And then there's the individual armatures and the magnet is attracting the little puck here and that pulls it down. So it's, it's a little lever. And now here we can see the magnets there's an insulating disc of just plastic. Can I get these all out? Yes, yes I can. Okay, so here's our electromagnets and this is the entire circuit to it. It's just a bunch of little electromagnets with iron cores. Um, I'm gonna try and pop this off here so you can see. Because if I can get the shield off, you'll be able to see all the little magnetic cores individually. Okay, there you go. And those are all, you can see the, all the individual little bobbins. I don't think I can get it any further apart than that without damaging it. But it's not like I'm scared of damaging things. Let's do some damage. Let's get in here and get a look at this. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Now look at that. Each one of those is an individual little electromagnet. And they're all wired together. You can see the, the circuit. So that through this cable, through these contacts, you can fire any one of these magnets. Just so they're just a little tiny electromagnet. So you put electricity in here and the traces carry it down to the coil. And when the coil fires, you see the armatures sit right on top, just like that. So when they fire, when the magnet goes off, it pulls this little armature down in and the lever pushes down at the middle. You can see the little circles. It pushes that in. So what is this doing? So now we know you put electricity in, this moves this way. Okay, they fire in like that. So what are we doing with that? Well, if you look here, see all those little yellow things sticking out? Those are the wires. And you can push down and there's a little spring that pushes it back, but let me get a little pointy bit. I can push down on the wires and you can see them push right back. Now, if I flip this over and push down on a wire, I'll hold this really, really still. I don't know if you can see that. Here, I'll put it on a, against a white paper. That should help. Okay. Now take a look out. You wanna look out here when I push this in the back. You'll see, see the little wire stick out? Little tiny wire. I push that in and it just peeks out. Boop, there's a wire. And if I go over here and push a different one, wire comes out at a different spot. So let's pull the wires out and see how tiny they are. I'm gonna work on a white field now, so make it easier for you guys to see this. 
Um, okay, so there's the wires. And you can see the wires have a little tiny spring on them. Oh, hey, look at this, look at this. Look down in there, you can see them. See how the wires go in and they bend, they go through like a, well, it's kind of like a lens, but basically it's a template with holes in it. And you can see the wires go down the inside through that, and then they all get lined up through the holes at the end. So we'll take all the wires out one at a time. Nine, three, five, seven, nine. Nine of them. That's a weird number to have. I would have expected 10. I certainly would have expected eight, but nine? Are we missing some? No, three, six, nine. Nine wires, nine pins, nine. That's really weird because usually in designs like this, Eight's a really common number because eight's really easy to do digitally when you're dealing with binary. Everything's an eight. I mean, from the number of tracks in, in your multi-track recorder is almost always a multiple of eight. Your bit depth is always a multiple of eight. Um, memory sizes, stuff like that, it's always eights. This is nine. Huh. I don't know. Comment in and tell me why. But there is a look at our little time printer and the fundamentals of how uh, um, dot matrix printers work. We will revisit this again in the future with bigger and better dot matrix printers, and maybe I can even get one to print for you. So here's an idea for you to think about. I came up with this idea years ago, and I don't know if anybody ever tried or not. It's probably a pretty dumb idea, but I thought it was kind of cool. When I was a kid, my brother was a tattoo artist. Like, he did this for a living. And I always thought it'd be really, really cool to make a dot matrix tattoo gun because think of how this works you have an electromagnet that pushes a little wire out the end right it's exactly how a tattoo gun works it's tattoo guns a little bit larger scale and a lot more robust but it's the same idea so why not make a dot matrix tattoo gun think of the ideas with that you guys have fun i'm chris bowden thank you for hanging out with me for another fun-filled equipment autopsy and getting to learn a couple things and just have some fun Please remember to comment and subscribe. Learn more about us at thegeekgroup.org. And by all means, if you're interested, you're welcome to join us and hang out real time with all these people who are talking to me in irc.thegeekgroup.org, which you can find through this link if you don't have an IRC client. You can go right there and you can watch us live while we're taping things like this and actually hang out and talk. I would love to have you. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.